welcome to new comic book day book club on my channel and we're talking a dc book and we got our buddy jp budget collecting here and i think something happened to alec huh oh i'm sorry i was just reading this sleeping pill decide this guy says a comic book burn <laughs> coming out the gate well, she is prescribing medications. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> so, I don't, you know. <laughs> that, that, that was a little, uh, little bit of acting for you. JP Budget Collecting, how you doing, brother? I am doing good. How are you guys? I just, you know, I just want to say that this is checking a item off my YouTube bucket list right now. Being on this show. Check. <laughs> so you know, I feel honored to be here. You know, well, you're as far as there, JP. <laughs> well, I legitimately had convinced myself you'd been on this show. I had legitimately. It's kind of like Rod. Oh, Rod was or, like, or like on the show. Caleb like, or Caleb. When when we first had him on, I was like, no, we definitely 100 percent have had him on. But well, you know, you do it every week. It's hard to keep track. Yeah, we would need to actually write things down yeah. and plan. Nah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't follow JP Budget Collecting, then I don't know what's going on. But you've got the link to his channel in the description below. Not the link to his channel, because I, I, I was too lazy to type that in tonight. That's all right. No, yeah. Nobody cares. You Come can't on. Find that guy, then. We, we cannibalize each other as people. Anyways, this guy, he's awesome. He does a show every Saturday looking at investment comics and spec comics. Six months later, you should check out JP Budget Collecting if you have not. He also did a hilarious video for my contest that Charlie picked as her favorite and a winner from uh, the video uh, announcement for the winners this last weekend. So awesome to have you here, brother. <laughs> That's right. Hashtag kick that bear island. <laughs> well, I, I just said in the chat, he's been on book club. He has been on book club. I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> what does he say? He says, I see how it is. John's J JP wins John's contest and gets to be on book club. Not jealous. Take that bear. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Uh, oh my goodness. Let's say hello to the chat. JP was here first. I think he was a little excited or nervous. I don't know. Is it time? <laughs> or am I late? I don't want to miss this. Love the show. Even when they're scrapping the bottom, scraping the bottom of the barrel. Like, <laughs> you know, there. that's a good, that's a good self burn. I appreciate that. It was very well done. Nobody, no one. Hello to you. And then I said, hello. I said it was a great episode. Where are you, Jason? <laughs> Harry Comics is in the chat. He had his shades on. TJ said, John, you left in plenty of time to be on time. <laughs> oh, it was did. my fault. I did. But I wanted to make sure this guy had time to read the book. Which he I did. did not. He did not. <laughs> uh, let's see here. HAQ, hello. Sharon, the life with two YouTubers. Thank you for coming by. You do not suck. Not, not true. Not at all. Um, man, they just let anyone on this show. Bear Island. Thank you. NYC, good to see you, Kavi. Uh, the Comic Book Club. Now, this is a gentleman whose channel I just subscribed to. They have an LCS in Florida near Perry somewhere. He said he was hanging out. So you, have you been there? No, but um, I'm in Florida. <laughs> it's a big state, but okay. It's very large. I so, was talking to someone who said something about driving to Tallahassee. I was like, oh, I thought there's four hours. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could be near San Francisco in four hours. That's a long drive. Yeah. I'm so, just not, Massachusetts, I could be in New York in four hours. So the Comic Books Club, they, they've got a – sorry, the Comics Club Incorporated, they've got a channel. They've been putting some cool uh, content out in the community, so you should check out their channel. It's pretty cool. Some good stuff. Um, Let's see who else we got here. Uh, Oh, Alec is here. Hi, Alec. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares. Yeah, moving on. Uh, just a recon. Hey, yo, good to see you, Rod. Thank you for coming by. Um, I don't get why DC turned into a bunch of wimps. Don't worry, nobody. No one. We're going to talk about the black label, the history, the problems, the future of the black label, what we think it should be done to fix it. It will Man. all happen. I promise you. This, this is going to be a, a classic Alec as a grump episode. I'll tell you what. But would we expect anything less? I would be disappointed hey, if <laughs> Every once in a while, I really like a book. What was the last one? Uh, something is killing your children. I like that. You did? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh, <laughs> I remember you complaining about it like the whole time. <laughs> no, I I may have been critical of it, but I still enjoyed it. Okay. I think I would put it with up there with Reaver for me as far as a book that didn't take enough risks for me. And I'll probably read it in trade or digitally, but not buy any more issues of it. Yeah. Um, here we are on Harleen, the newest black label book, the one that's the correct size. I know they got a lot of other black label books floating around in different sizes. For me, black label should be this format. That's just large. I don't know that it size. needs to be as large as this particular one. This was a long. The, oh. This this is like legitimately a novel, like it's every page without rest has just so many words on it. Oh my god! Just, like you turn the page, you're like, oh maybe I'll get like a nice slow paced. Nope, it's like just narration felt- on narration on like some of these conversations. And they're just oh never mind. Oh hold on, That's keep fun. going. I'll just say, like, I'm just talking about the format of it. That first big splash page was a eyeball relief for me. Oh, yeah. I got to that first big splash page, and I was like, oh, thank God. I've been waiting for a page that was just, like, blow me away with art and not just right. talk at me a whole bunch. Um, so it's, it's, I would say this. It's it's very long. $8. $7.99 is the price tag. Um, it's one writer, artist, cover artist, one gentleman doing all of the work, and it's Stepan Sejic. Yeah, that's good. Go with that. I've had to say it twice tonight, and I think I've done well both times. Um, I will say I I think this would for me, having read a little bit of pretty much every black label book, this would be my second favorite black label book, but that is not a compliment. <laughs> Uh, I have a question about the artwork. Yes. Okay. Why didn't he finish it? What does that mean? As a joke, because it looks totally unfinished to me. Okay, gotcha. Burn. Yeah, oh. sick burn on on Mr. Sedgwick. Okay. Um, so yeah, I get. I, I didn't hate it. I would put it above the Superman that Frank Miller and did with John Romita. I'd put it above. I'm not enjoying Curse of the White Knight. I stopped reading that one. I uh, put it above what was the other Batman one that uh, was it the last night on earth put it yeah. above that yeah, I think that's very good. so all the other black label books for me is are, are below this book Harleen this feels at least worthy of the name more so than all those other ones um, yeah I don't think it was bad yeah I don't but think it was, it, was bad it was so dull Yes. And over long, I really do wish they had removed portions of the dialogue and replaced them with just some very interesting, like you're saying, better rounded art. Um, yeah. Um, what about you, JP? What are, just, just your overall thoughts before we get into like nitty gritty stuff. Well, I clearly liked it better than either of you, but, um, but like, but I would agree. It is overly like, some of these conversations are not necessary. I like that it's coming from that she's telling her own story. Like, yes. Like, I appreciate that it's coming from her voice, her memory of these events, and the lead up. And I like that there's this, I like that there's an issue that is a lead up to where it gets to. I like where it starts and where it gets to. But I would agree that it takes a long time to get there. Some of which is necessary, but some of it is not. Um, it's just very, I mean, some of these pages, like these two pages where she talks to Harvey. Let me blow it up here for you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my just, God. oh, my and there's God. Oh, my God. There's a lot of, there, uh, a lot of pages like that. Yeah, that, that, I, I actually, if I, if I may, may I do a dramatic reading when we have a moment? <laughs> no, I would be so excited for that. Right. But so let's let's I mean I can give an overview of the plot if if everybody wants it, but basically what you're getting is the backstory of Harley Quinn told by Harley Quinn, which I from what I understand we've never really officially gotten on this scale before. No. Um and so we're getting to see her uh as a 
young therapist and her maybe struggles in, in medical school and then getting uh, an effective position and then moving into work in Arkham Asylum to, to kind of work on criminal psychology. And it's sort of that little subtle story arc with lots of sort of characters popping in and out here and there, but really that's it. Did I, do you feel like that kind of sums it up well enough? Yeah. It, it, was, it, was, it was just a whole lot of characters saying way more than they needed to to get to the point. Okay. I was going for more plot than style. Yeah, but, I, yeah. but, I mean, that, the plot revolved around, like, like you said, the plot is very thin at this point. It's Harley, you know, she had this affair with a, with a teacher, and so she thinks that everyone's against her because of it. So she feels like she can't succeed in her field because she's, like, been blackballed. Uh, and then Lucius Fox comes in and says, oh, we want to fund your research and we want to give you a position at Arkham Asylum. Um, she had had an incident with the Joker where he robbed some place and he was going to shoot her, but then he didn't. She has these nightmares and then she ends up getting to Arkham and the Joker's there and that's a whole thing. Um, but basically the pot is... Uh, Harley has nightmares, gets a job at Arkham, works with the Joker, right? Right. But boy, it takes a long way to get there. So I'm actually like, some of that I'm okay with that it takes a lot longer to get there. I do think it, my biggest complaint is not how long it takes to get there in terms of like her journey before, because she's like really reluctant to like go visit him. Right. Like, she gets dark. She's really reluctant. It's like she's dealing with everybody else. She won't. She puts his file in the drawer. She doesn't want to deal with him. Um, I appreciate that. It's one of the things that I had a big complaint about uh, when, and Javi put it up in the chat where because we just recently did Mad Love with Delphia for Gotham City Chronicles and Kachum. Delphia and Kachum were on. We did Mad Love, and my biggest complaint was there wasn't with that story as her origin is they don't explain why on earth she would actually fall for this guy. Like it just happens. And there's no, it's like they rush through everything because it's right. human. It covers everything. This goes too far the other way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do appreciate that there are details that they show like the reluctance of her to actually deal with him. But she not, you know, they, there's a one panel thing in um, Mad Love where she like has the affair with her professor and they actually kind of explain that here. Like they give her a more realistic backstory, but boy, do they use a lot of words. It's, that's really my only, like Alec complained about the art. I actually enjoyed the art. Um, yeah, I, I don't know that I hated the art or anything. No, I just I didn't, like I didn't either. The splash pages, as much as they were a relief for my eye, were not even eye catching. I wanted, you know, there the, there was very little dynamic. So you guys did not. Yeah, it was it was just kind of simple. I felt like it wasn't uh, blowing me away. Like look at that look at Sorry. that drawing of Harley. It just I get it you. doesn't it doesn't look like they put the time into. It looks like first of all, they clearly did this on an iPad. It's so digital looking. They don't try to hide that at all. They don't use any sort of brushes that are not super digital. And uh, it just looks like scratchy and unfinished, but not like in a intentional way enough to, for me. I don't know. It just, it looks like it, like it's halfway done. Yeah, and I think there's some back and forth with the discussion, discussing the pacing as well. Um, overall, I think you, you get readers on both sides, right? Ones that want the backstory, the ones that want more detail, and then ones that get bored with it. I, and I think that it's not as simple as one or the other, because I think when done right, either one can be effective. I just don't right. necessarily feel like it's happening here with that. Yeah. I, I want Alex dramatic reading just so that we can get. Yeah, a I think this is, per this is perfect timing. This is perfect yeah. timing because this is exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. This 
over detail minutia. Oh, geez, I'm big. Okay. Well, you're, you're going to read. We, we're so, gonna, so this is dramatic, this, be dramatic. This is a conversation between Lucius Fox and Harley. Oh, um, I'm so glad you picked this part. Oh, my God. Uh, I, I'm going to try my best Harley impression. I, I've never done one before, but. All right. So it starts with Lucius Fox. He's offering her the job uh, with, with, uh, through Wayne Enterprises. <clears throat> Mr. Wayne has a personal history with crime in the city. He would look for any plausible way to help reduce it. I, for one, consider your theory plausible enough to merit the requested funds. It helps that your research, it helps that your proposed research budget is exceedingly modest. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, the only real cost would be the second phase with the brain activity neur neuroimaging. Everything before that is interview work, which means, oh God, now I gotta find out how to actually get access to Arkham Blackgate and the Gotham Police. Relax, Doctor. Arkham shouldn't be a problem. Mr. Wayne has funds in has funded its repairs and security, so they owe us. Same goes for the Gotham PD. We can make some calls. And then this is the person at the college. Meanwhile, I'll ask for your permits for accessing Blackgate. It's just like, what are you talking about? You could say all of this in two words like you, we don't need this minute like yes this is probably how an actual conversation uh between two people in this situation would talk about this right like if he was offering her job they would talk about this nitty-gritty stuff but that's not how you write sorry i, I had myself muted i just couldn't <laughs> that was amazing a am i wrong <laughs> oh i I will say, I also feel like in general, what nobody, no one said is spot on. There are this this whole sequence with with Lucius Fox, and then the later one with Harvey Dent are completely unnecessary. And, you can like, easily fill them in with like a half a panel or something, and just move on to the stuff we want. They seemed so overdone. It, even like even little things. I like Bearline's comment. Jesus Christ, no way I'm reading this. Bye bye, six dollars. So this is when she gets to Arkham. I'm not going to do like the whole like performance again, but uh, the uh, the head of security says, "Hey, Doctor uh, Quinzel, is that right? Sorry, Quitzel. It's Quinzel, Harleen Quinzel. Odd name, middle name Francis. Hmm, that's a mouthful. Anyway, it's Tim. I'm Tim. Tim Bronson. I'm the chief security here. Come on, let's get you into our system. Right. Uh, speaking of security, I was a half step away from a full pub exam back there." Is that the standard operating procedure or, oh, that we're just on high alert at least until his transfer is complete. His, and then it shows the Joker. What is the point of any of that? That does not, it's not character building. It's not plot. It's just like, hey, I'm here at Arkham now. Oh, there's the Joker. Like what, what is, what is all, why, 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 why? Now, I think I want. There's two things I want to get into here, and JP is going to be. I want to get to JP. <laughs> on. Comics just explained. Said I'll super chat at six dollars have Alec act out the issue. Yeah, there's so, <laughs> there's so many, so many good comments about why we're not doing this every week because clearly I don't know why. I don't know why. Um, that was amazing. I'm snapping my fingers in applause like a beat poet. <laughs> it's just it. It was like I said that these are. To credit the author, very true to life conversations. Yeah. But life is boring as hell. We read comics for escapism and watch movies to see things that are more interesting and fun than actual conversations we have in real life because real life conversations are stupid and filled with minutiae like this that we don't need in a comic book. Right. So, uh, aside, I've got, a, I've got an aside. Okay. Like, obviously, Format wise, it's over long and over wordy, and 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 that's frustrating and not, uh, sleep inducing. Is there a bigger issue as far as the the fundamentals of who Harley is making this work or not work? Because for me, I always felt like as as entertaining as i found her on the animated series i've never enjoyed her in comics and i generally feel like she is an awful person to have as any kind of a oh i want to dress up and be like harley quinn 
She's she's not, a, not a role model. She's a self-made doctor who throws it all away to be with the world's worst boyfriend, and then completely uh, it lets this person abuse her at turn every turn. Is it then difficult to celebrate her crashing and burning in a three-issue storyline? People like her. <laughs> <laughs> Um, go ahead. Alex. For me, I, 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 I want to like her as a character, and I love the animated series version of her. But in the back of my mind, there's this like itch that I can't scratch with her. Well, I think the fact that she like falls into a trap of an abusive relationship and doesn't know how to find her way out of it is not something that is that uncommon in the real world. This is totally. an extreme. Yeah. Um, this is obviously the extreme of that. Um, so I don't necessarily have a problem with them. Like I was actually looking forward. It's the reason I suggested it. Sorry, Alec. <laughs> no, I was going to buy it anyway. So it's but, no um, it, you know, I like the idea of trying to actually get down. <laughs> <laughs> of actually understanding, you know, what would make somebody do that? What would make, how does she fall into this trap? How does he do this to her? And I clearly like the fact that in this, it's her from telling the story from some sort of perspective of like, she's all out the backside at some point. We don't know what that point is, where she's at yet. Right. But Cause we don't see that. We don't see that version of her looking back to tell this story. Yeah. We don't know where she's at in her life as she's telling this story. Right. So I find that all very interesting, but it is the minutia of the book to me that's the problem. It's not the overarching like story. I feel like it could be really, really good. I enjoyed it, uh, like, but clearly more than you guys did. But I just feel like it's um, he just this particular writer appears to be like Alex said, very obsessed with telling writing true to life conversations, which they're wordy like true to life conversations, but I'm not sure how true to life they are. You know what I mean? Like sure. Yeah, I, I just meant like the content of the conversations. Like you you would be talking about these details about getting access to yeah. to Arkham and all this stuff that is just we we don't need to hear about like how someone drove to a place. You know, like that Anything like that? Any any sort of like insignificant? Like we get it. We are now here. <laughs> um. So here's my problem with Harley Quinn as a character. Uh, while we're on that topic, I think alone she can be entertaining because um, she's crazy and kooky and you know does things with big hammers and whatever. She's she's like the Joker, but sexy right and in in the cartoon she's amazing but the issue and obviously you cannot tackle this in an animated series for children the issue with her character that no one has really really tackled except a little bit in heroes in crisis is that she is an abuse victim right right and she's stuck in this relationship with someone that she loves which is a very real world situation right it is and yeah. And th this idea of I can't leave him, I love him too much. He, you know, he'll, he promises that he won't do it again type of thing, right? Right. And that that's just not addressed. If that were addressed, it would be entirely different. But it's not. She's just, she just takes it on the chin and moves on. Right. And that's where I'm hoping this will go because we haven't exactly. gotten to stage yet. That's where I'm hoping this will live up to the black label label <laughs> of what it should be is that we're actually going to get that in the next two books. Um, you know, the true dynamics of this abusive relationship and how she like fails to deal with it because of what you just said, Alec. Um, to me, that's always been the, the potential really interesting thing about her that they've never touched on in the comics. I agree with John. I don't own, like I have some comics behind me. That's almost all my Harley stuff. And I really enjoyed her from the animated series. 
but he's Bugs Bunny in the comic books now. Like it's <laughs> you know, good description, yeah. I mean, she's Bugs Bunny. I mean, it's all like breaking the fourth wall and the big hammer and like these ridiculous one shot stories that have no and there's no depth. They don't write her with any depth most of the time. And that's what I was hoping to get out of this. I'm not sure if we're going to get it yet. And I feel like for me, her fundamental flaw isn't that she's in a bad relationship and can't find a way out because I find that's humanizing. I think her fundamental flaw is that she's clearly an intelligent person who went through medical school and was able to get a successful job, yet she can't seem to think for herself. You know, I, 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 even when I read her in solo stuff, like some of the solo Harley stuff, I'm looking at her like, God, she acts like an idiot. How are you, how are you well, able to get through medical school and get a successful job and be this screwy? She, and th this is another real, very real, real world situation that is not um, really ever kind of brought to the forefront with, as far as her character is concerned. Plenty of people go through psychotic breaks. Absolutely. Like they, they can have very successful careers. And in fact, most um, men who become psychotic, it doesn't happen until they're in their 30s. Right. Now, I don't, I don't know about women, but so it's very possible that she could have a perfectly successful career and something in her snaps for a reason and she becomes psychotic. Like that, that I buy, but they don't, they just say like, oh, she's in love with the Joker and that makes her crazy. But uh, yeah, I mean, so it, it, if that, if J, if like JP is saying, the, 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 the overall arc of the story is basically watching her crack and watching her go through that nervous breakdown and become somebody who's far more fragile and codependent and, and a shell of basically the person that she could have been. That's powerful. But I feel like that emotional side is missing here. So far, yeah. For me. And I, I could see that being a powerful story. Um, I just don't get that here. And then my worry again is, okay, then are we watching three issues of a storyline where we're just seeing somebody become a fragile shell of themselves? Yeah, and that's that, not interesting. Is that, just, is that just painful to watch? Yeah. Well, hey, yeah. Ryan. It could be. It it all depends on, to me, it all depends on how good this is actually going to be. It really depends on where she's at when she's telling the story. Like, when we get to the end, I assume, I hope, that we will see the version of Harleen that's telling the story. And depending on where she's at, could make this very powerful or could make it, what John said, just very, like, sad and depressing. Um, some interesting comments about, about her and her relationship with the Joker. And then Jay, uh, Kavi was saying that originally in the, her original backstory, she tricked her way into her psychology degree. So the way it is, cause we just read this, um, yeah. versus how it is here is the way it is in mad love is they basically express it, that she was smart enough to get the degree, but she was too lazy. So she took shortcuts to basically she slept with professors to get better grades as the way it's described in mad love and it's not that she's dumb it's that she just was lazy um and uh this basically tweaks that to deal with it as in she had she fell for a professor she had an affair with him but it didn't really have anything to do with although everyone assumes that's how she got good grades it didn't actually have anything to do with it it's the way they they portray it here so that is the difference copy in terms of how they're portraying it here. Ryan says he loves the tragedy of knowing where this is going at the end the whole time. And he really enjoyed that kind of uh, uh, Greek tragedy, I guess. Of it. Yeah, sure. I, I really liked a lot of the imagery and the work, like the words I liked of this are almost all in the red boxes. Like her monologue of as she's going through this. Like that, I enjoyed. It's all the stuff in the white boxes that's a problem. <laughs> like, what percentage of the text do you think they could take out of this and not lose any of the story? At least fifty. I was gonna. I, I was gonna say sixty percent. Like, 
so much of it is unnecessary. I, I mean, I know I keep harping on it, but it's just it is. I, I'm going to drop this bomb. My favorite word. It's Buck Wild. I don't think it's Buck Wild. No. Oh. No, I think that it's missing. I think it's missing Buck Wild. I don't feel like there's any wild to this. No, it's I mean the, the very, amount. The amount of text is Buck Buck Wild, not the not the content. Yeah, I think the amount of text is a crux for this particular writer and artist. I like, and may I've never read any of this other stuff, but this strikes me as someone who in order to tell the story has to like tell every like detail he can't like and maybe i i'm i'm judging this off of one comic book i've never read anything else this guy's written or done but it like i do feel like all the words are a crutch for him to get through the story it's how he moves like he needs them we don't if that makes any sense and yeah. it's the yeah, impression totally. from this which is not like not a good thing <laughs> at all, but like I feel like it's like he's using all the words as a crutch. Definitely. Um, you describe it as a novel, and I feel like he wanted to write not the comic book version of Harley's backstory, but the novelization. This version of Harley's backstory. <laughs> you know, I <laughs> to a certain degree, I think that's what's going on. Ryan mentioned the Silence of the Lambs vibes at the end. And I will say I was expecting that. I was yeah. waiting for that moment of like, you know, stay to the left when you go down the hall and then all, all the all the like, oh, don't get too near him. And then it, it definitely ended with the, okay, she's standing in front of the glass like le before Lecter or whatever. I just didn't think it had any of that emotion for that. I wasn't scared. I wasn't excited i wasn't nervous or any of that kind of i didn't i didn't have an emotional reaction to any of it and it might have just been that i had been lulled a little bit to sleep with the guys <laughs> talking but i found myself even skimming passages just to be like okay wow okay they're still talking you know um but i again like jason's saying i like the overall idea of showing her uh tell her having her tell her own version of her psychological de-evolution um yeah what are you laughing about fair island or did I, I'm, I'm not scrolled down in a little bit here did I miss says, uh, once you go black label you immediately go back <laughs> I, oh, oh there it is. sorry it took a little while to pop up on my screen there yeah so and yes, Fire Guy Ryan, I mentioned at the beginning, uh, he's saying, I felt like this is the most black label, black label book since Batman Damned. I agree. I said it was my second favorite black label book, but I also said that's not a compliment. I think that I think that the other black label books have been bad, like so, un, almost unreadable. So, not bad, but they haven't been black label for any reason. Yeah, th that that's actually a conversation I wanted to have. So I don't know if we want to transition to that now or yeah, well, let's put a pin in that. Obviously, uh, I would be interested in reading this. In, you know, getting the graphic novel from my library and reading it, or reading a digital version. I'd be interested, but I am not going to pick up the second issue. What about you guys? I know hard hard pass. So hard pass. I will pick up the second issue. Okay. And um, I will say, I'm happy to see it back in the prestige format, the magazine size and all that kind of thing. And I do like the, enc I'm encouraged by seeing one artist doing all the work and being given a lot of freedom to do that. Um, yeah. more, more editing might have been nice, but um, I like all of that. And the, the, the second half of what I wanted uh, the show to be about would be the state of the black label and where it should be going in our opinions later on, or at least the, it's two parts, right? What are the flaws of the black label and, and, and how do they fix that going forward? So Jason, what are some of your thoughts on that? Well, to me at the moment, like we talked about this beforehand is there's no consistency in how they're formatting the black label. So there's no, like, to me right now, it's become like their Elseworld title instead of a black label. It's just like, oh, it's a story that doesn't take place at DC Continuity. It's a black label. 
Um, there's nothing adult about it at this stage after Batman Dam, which uh, JD, you guys talked about on Comic Core a while ago, which was basically after the whole response to the Batawang, <laughs> DC is basically like tucked their tail and we're not going to take risks with this. No, so, like right. people complain, like some of the people in the chat were like, is she naked in this? Well, this one is not appropriate for that, like for her to have like shown skin. If in the next book and two, there should be some sex. And now you don't necessarily have to see everything for it to be adult. My whole point is black label should be adult stories. It doesn't mean you have to throw in gratuitous nudity just because it's an adult story, but it should be an adult story. Yeah, it should, the theme of, yeah, it should be, so Fire Guy Ryan said, yeah, thank you for highlighting that. Um, said to me, black label just means vertigo, I guess. I was actually going to bring that up and say, vertigo, you pick up a vertigo book, it has a very specific feel. It doesn't matter what the story is. You pick up a vertigo book, you're like, yes, I, I get it, this is a vertigo book. Yes. Besides the swears in this, which, by the way, I'm not going to curse on your channel, John, but they use the F word as an adverb and they put it in. But when the girl is con confronting her about having sex with the teacher and uses it as a verb, they put it as symbols. <laughs> so, so you can't say it as a sex act but you can say it as an adverb. Yeah. What? Yeah, splitting hairs for sure. Like if if it's going to be adult, just make it adult. So is this, it sounds like what we're hitting on is this idea of a, I don't know, a perception or a publicity problem. Because I know that when it first came on the scene, everybody felt like, oh, Black Label is adult themed stuff. But I know that nowadays, everything I read from DC says they want to call it, no, it's it's creator run. It's 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 artist managed stuff. It's they, not supposed yeah. to be adult. It's supposed to be artist vision. It's visionary stuff. It has nothing to do with adult. That's because they chicken out. Is it a branding issue or is it a legitimate chickening out problem uh, i think i think that's what it is i think they had comics clubbing just said dc gave us the impression that black label would be hard ho hardcore and very mature but that has no, not always been the case so confusion um yeah it's it's not that it needs to be like gratuitously filled with violence and sex is that but it does need like vertigo books are go, going back to this it's the closest comparison vertigo books felt mature it didn't matter what the content was as far as like violent sex swears, whatever, but they felt like these are not stories for children just because of what they're discussing or the plot or like how they're presenting it. If again, if this didn't have the curse words in it and was just a regular comic, would you say, Whoa, what is DC doing? This is way too mature to make it a book. <laughs> like this it absolutely not. It it is akin to anything else like spider-man books or like that jj abram spider-man book that came out like that had super mature themes in it right so then you know I, life with two youtubers says it's a public perception perception issue and i think it's definitely based on at the beginning what they were presenting to to people as this is the design and what we're doing and then of course all the backtracking that followed yeah. So then that leads me to like, what's the solution? Like, let's just, let's just say you had a little power to make some important decisions at DC. Uh, JP, what, what's your solution to this debacle? Uh, at this stage? Yeah. Cause I mean, now they're locked in, right? They're, you know, everybody's mentioning vertigo. It's all being sort of melded together. It's, it's the, the wheels wagon. have come off the wagon. Like I, I, how do you put this back together and salvage this? You name it something else. Rebrand all over again. Rebrand it. it. That's the only way. To me, like, that's the, e uh, well, I should say that's the easiest solution. Sure. The only, the, the real solution is to basically, like, if you're going to have, is to actually, like, tell 
adult stories with actually making a black label. Why is it a black label if it's just an Elseworlds tale? Or have, like, categories under black label or something, like, and maybe that's what they're trying to do with, like, the prestige format versus the non-prestige, which I don't understand why some books are one way and some books are the other. Well, it's because I think they decided retroactively they needed another Black Label book and they knew Sean Gordon was putting something out or Sean Murphy or whatever. And so they decided to just call it a Black Label book. But if you remember, when Batman Dam came out, at the same time, they were releasing the trade for White Knight and they were rebranding it under the Black Label. Yep. They came out... Actually, that trade, I think, came out bef- the same week, maybe, as Batman Damned One, or within a week. Like, it but, was in the, they'd already rebranded White Knight as Black Label. D- DC's New Frontier, they rebranded as Black Label, too. And that is, a, you know, Darwin Cook story. It, like, I wouldn't say that's mature, but to John's point, it's more of a, oh, this is a creator run project. But that's not the way they sold it originally. No, definitely not. And my, I'm sorry, I feel like I cut you off. Oh no, you're you're fine. Um, yeah, I just think they need to, if they're gonna stick with the black label, they need to pick a lane and they need to like, okay, this is what this is. And I think the, I really think at this point they'd be better off just DC creators or. These, you know, and just go with something like that, and like just a tour series or whatever, like one vision, one person's vision, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, just dump because the back, black label at this point has gained baggage because of the way they overreacted to the Batwing because it went into like it was on CNN and people were talking about it. Well, look at what the price of that book did. People didn't. Collectors and comic book in- people didn't care. And does anybody know? Like, I'm assuming that that is still the highest selling black label thus far. Oh, I'd assume so. This right? I, 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 I can't guess. imagine any of the other black labels selling the same. So, isn't there a part of them that's like, well, it made money? Like, where, where's the, where's the conservative side of them that's like, that made money? Why aren't we following yeah. suit there? There's money here. I, that I don't understand. So, I do not understand that. My two issues. So I, I've said this from the beginning since Batman Damned. The issue with the fact that there was a dick in that, sorry, there was a, a wang in that book was that versus Vertigo again, if a parent sees a kid picking up a Vertigo book, they would say, what's that? Is it appropriate? They see a kid picking up a DC book. They don't know what black label means. The mature readers thing is hidden on the back of the book. The- like is- look look how small look how small this is. Yeah. You can't even see it. It says it right. under the price, it says mature readers. No, nope. nope. parents aren't necessarily going to question it because it says DC. So that's why the Batwang was such a bigger deal than it needed to be, was because it was a DC book. Black label means nothing to anybody. Right. Walking to a comic shop unless you're a hardcore fan. And even then, nobody knows what it means, clearly. So they need to call it something akin to Vertigo. Now, Vertigo obviously doesn't work because they're trying to keep it in universe with characters and stuff like that, but it needs to have a different name other than DC if they wanna keep pushing the envelope with mature stories. Because the second they show Harley Quinn having sex in a book, it's gonna be the whole thing all over again where people are gonna say, oh my God, think of the children, which yes, think of the children. Like a kid shouldn't pick up a Batman book and see a penis in it. But, but yeah. and, and going back to the whole thing about creator run, this felt like it didn't have an editor. Yeah. Right. Somebody up there said that it was the issue with the biggest issue with sound of, or DS was saying, what did DS say? Uh, I think the combination of editor and writer might be hurting this. Book. Yeah, this writer needs a editor. He to needs say, a cut all this out. Yeah. He needed an editor to like, because, again, I think the overall, I really, more than you guys, I really enjoyed the overall story of this book. But, damn, did it take a long time to get through it. <laughs> and it was, and most of it 
was unnecessary. I said 50%. Alex said 60. I think right in that ballpark of the words could be lost. I honestly think if you just said the words in the white bubbles, like 75 or 80%. To me, the only words that were like truly critical for the most part were the ones in the red boxes, her inner monologue as she's telling the story. Like, and like the four pages of her talking about her her dissertation or whatever, I just like skipped over that. I'm like, okay, I get the point immediately what she's saying. I don't need to actually hear a medical dissertation about, you know, helping cr- criminally insane patients. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's just lazy of me, but. So it sounds like in both your theories, and I would firmly agree, the black label needs a rebranding and needs a new name. The black label needs to go and, and become something that people can understand what it is clearly and that the audience purchasing it would have the same understanding. Whether that means mature readers, adult stories, or whether that means artist creator run DC universe product, it needs to be clearly laid out, spelled out, and then produced in some kind of consistency. Yeah. And I mean, clearly, I think what the answer is, is that they are creator-run stories that are not held back by the the, the box of DC appropriateness. So they have the option to be more mature, but they don't have to be. Right. And I think like, it's fine. Like, a story does not have to be... A, like a, like Alex said earlier, gratuitous violence and sex to be an adult story. It can just, or, or a creator story. If it's, if they're going to go with creator, that's fine. Just go with it <laughs> and stop like going back and forth. Not, not every Vertigo book was an R rated story. No. Just the good ones. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I that I know it's a joke, but like most, I won't say most, but a lot of of the greatest stories and movies and comics and stuff like that are not boxed in by any sort of censorship because it just allows you room to breathe and room for your elbows and like you aren't boxed like the real world is upsetting an adult and like so to tell a story that is actually impactful sometimes you need to include stuff like that right yeah and and i think were they to define the parameters more clearly i think people would have less to moan about right because i think that right now every time a black label book comes out the comments are about nudity every every time because now there's a there's an expectation that either they will do it or that they chickened out and didn't do it and it's all that's all that anybody's talking about they're not talking about the quality of their story they're talking about these other things right. and i think as long as they hold that as the black label and call it that from here on they're going to have that debate forever yeah i mean like everyone the first question we got in the chat tonight when we were doing harleen is do we see your boobs yeah and like they're you there you shouldn't there's no re it would be completely gratuitous there is a harley quinn sex scene and this one well i guess the yeah like two shots of them being interrupted but it's it's just like her shoulder it's her back actually her bare back i don't know that and to me that one because of of the way it's being told that one i don't think should be any more than what it is yeah and again i felt like when i saw it i was like whoa why is that in there like yeah, I almost feel like it was not even needed. There's more sex in Batman White Knight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think that, yes, you know, going back to the nudity point, is that if Black Label was just, here's Harleen number one, it's a bunch of pinups of her naked. People would be so psyched about that. <laughs> right? Like, that's what people want from this. They want to see female characters in comics naked. So then how do you, as an editor or creator of, of, of adult or black label material at DC, meet fan expectations yet also create something that's not just simply a cruddy piece of objectification? 
they, they shouldn't have focused on it being mature from the beginning. Yeah. I mean, it's too late now. They've, they've blown that lid, but it was, it was a mistake for them to say, we're creating mature stories because well, what does everyone's mind go to when they hear mature sex and nudity? Well, especially when you give them that so blatantly in the first issue that you guilty well, and you give them in the first issue. And then in the second issue is a reaction. They clearly, she, clearly covered up her boobs. Was supposed to be a sex scene that you would, where you would have seen her boobs with her between her and Batman, and you clearly the book was delayed. And it's like, why this should be there, and it's not. Yeah, so clearly, clearly, yeah, the art is super obviously edited. Yeah, they clearly cut it in response to the backlash. So now everybody's like. Well, we didn't get to see them there. We'll, we'll see them in this, and it it becomes something that people are focused on when they don't need to be. They should be focused on the story, and yeah, and it all comes back to they sold it as mature. The very first thing they went with was Batman Damned, which was very mature, <laughs> very mature, and had, like, even outside of the out of the Batwing, it was very mature. It was just yeah, very mature and theme. Yeah. Absolutely. It was very mature, and it had nudity in it. And then there was a firestorm around it, although I don't know how much of it was true backlash. And then they clearly edited the very next book and delayed it, and everything got put off. And yeah, they the response to what happened with the first one and the way they set up the first book that came out in the Black Label series is what has sent them down this path that I'm not sure Black Label's ever going to really recover from. I think eventually they're going to rebrand. Can I throw out one last thing for me that, that, that's been a problem I think for Black Label and seems to clearly be a problem for that, whatever they want to call it or however they want to brand it going forward. It's, I've mentioned it a bunch of times, but I'm, I'm very frustrated that it's basically the Batman universe. The entire oh, thing. Mean, you got one comic up to now that's not Batman universe and that's that Superman one that they did and everything else is Batman you I think the thing that frustrates me most about Black Label is there are so many great missed opportunities I want to see a booster gold and, and a like raunchy comedy like oh, yeah give like, me a, that a hang, give you a hangover with booster gold and blue beetle exactly it doesn't need to be like filled with nudity. It could just be hilarious. And, yeah. and like, just like, why does it have to be? I think bat, the Batman thing drives me as crazy as I know DC fans are bothered by the Spider Man. Every book's a Spider Man book. And, and it's like, it's like, why does the black label? I mean, I remember when I was reading Batman as a kid, Batman wasn't like super, everything wasn't super dark with Batman. But now it's like black label, everything's got to be like raw. Let's get Batman just raw. Let's how raw can we get the Batman universe? And it's like, there's so many other genre avenues that the black label could enjoy. And I'm just continually bothered by every time I see the new DC previews, it's like, here's three more black label books. They're all Batman related. Yeah, if you remember when they first announced it, it was Batman Damned, uh, Last Night on Earth, the Superman book, and there were two Wonder Woman books. Well, there was an Amazon book that was yeah. about, that wasn't about Wonder Woman, but it was about Amazons, and then there was a Wonder Woman book. Those were the first five books they announced. Those two Wonder Woman books have never seen the light of day. Um, and there is a Wonder Woman Black Label book coming in December, but it's going to be over a year and a half. Basically it took them to do the second non Batman story or to even complete the Trinity. But like I'm saying the black labels, oh, yeah. the opportunity to dive into those characters, the Constantines, the swamp things, the, 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 the realms where somebody with some creative juices flowing could really rock this. The, I feel like for me, the biggest frustration is the fact that they foul off every pitch at this point. Yeah. Sorry to sport the metaphor that. Yeah. Sports ball. Sports ball. Love some sports ball. <laughs> Huge thank you to JP for joining us to talk DC books, to talk Black Label. The guy knows what he's talking about. You've got to check his channel. I've, I've linked it down below, but I'm sure almost all of you know who he is. 
Uh, JP, do you want to mention anything that's coming up on your channel? I know you got your Saturday show every Saturday. Every Saturday. Um, next Monday, uh, we'll be back with another Gotham City Chronicles. Um, we are joining Black Mirror with Bear Island is joining oh. Comic Books NYC and I as our guest. I've yet to read that, so perfect opportunity to dig that out. So, yeah, we're we're where's it at? It's laying here somewhere. So we're reading through this. Will be our story for next Monday. Um, beyond that, I don't really have anything necessarily planned. I'm I always do a Sunday night live stream uh, where I call it comics by pick weekly pickups and whatever. And I usually, if you're in the chat and you want to talk, I usually just put the link in the chat. You can just hop in with me. Um, and yeah, beyond that, I've started a series called let's collect. Um, so far I've done where I basically break down key books, key stories and fun covers for a given character. So far I've done Nightwing, Black Widow, Black Canary and Silver Surfer. Um, I've actually not decided on who's going to be the next one yet, but hopefully I've been trying to do one every two weeks. So I need to get one out next week. So um, if I'm going to stick to that, but uh, at some point I need to pick who that's going to be. Miss Explained is asking if the new Jeff Lemire question series is on the black label. It is supposed to be black label, I believe. Okay, So there you go. Finally hearing me. Good. I'd forgotten about that one. And Alec, uh, I appreciate you staying up late, brother. I think you're about as tired as I am, but uh, you got anything big coming up on your channel this next week? Um, uh, not necessarily i really want to start making some pre-recorded videos again uh so i can get my ass in gear maybe you'll see one of those over the weekend um and then on monday at comic core we got story comic core hopefully back in action this week since I was, goodness since i was yeah 90s goodness uh, since i was out of town this monday i couldn't do it um but other than that i don't have anything planned other than book club next week which I realize we did not pick a book for you. No, we did not. We were way too tired. Too many things, little things going on. So we will have to uh, let people know on Instagram what the hot book is or whatever. And at some point, we'll, we'll let you know. We'll figure it out. Sorry that we're... Congress we're explained just said I bought a bunch of 90s comics today. So he he's did. ready to go. He showed some off on the Unlimited show tonight. It was pretty badass. Um, I'm starting to watch a series called Let's Watch JP Collect. Guess what we do? <laughs> that would be very boring because that many weekly pickups and about a book a month that's not a weekly pickup that comes into my collection. That would be very boring. <laughs> so uh, so uh, for me, uh, I, I will say Saturday's show is going to be a little different because I am going to be out of town with my brothers and my dad. So it'll be a Saturday morning comics with my family, not my daughter's. And hopefully uh, some hijinks. It was a year ago that the, my family, extended family, found out that I even have a YouTube channel. So we'll see how they feel a year later uh, <laughs> that I'm going to be up early doing the Saturday morning show. It could be something a little different for us. Nice. Um, and then hopefully soon I got a couple shows in the works as far as boxing videos because we're sending this guy a package for oh. DC here soon. And a few other ones that we're putting together. Uh, as well as I have, uh, let's see, a, a couple of movie shows in the works. Hopefully I can fit in here soon. So hopefully keep watching, clicking that notification bell. You'll see us pop up with some other cool stuff. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Yeah. And uh, see you guys again on New Comic Book Day next week. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> I beat you. <laughs>